um, welcome to the revival of this broadcast, Talk to Harry. My name is Harry Tambuatko. Okay, in this program, we will feature primarily interviews with the academe, professionals, and yes, leaders. We will tackle issues on climate change, food security, good governance, and consumer branding. Thanks to iTech Digital Production Services with Renz Padayon that he has made all of this possible. In this show of Talk to Harry, this is in corroboration with Superbrands Marketing International Inc. So here we go. Today's broadcast, today's test broadcast brings us outside Manila using Zoom. And we have a professional on the other side of the studio. His name is David Nye. I guess we can put him on the monitor now. David, are you on? Let's see. I can see you, but- Yes, Harry. There hey. You. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, listen, this is all with a singular purpose of reintroducing your expertise here in the market. Considering- oh, I'm, have, I'm glad you think so. No, well, specifically to reintroduce expertism or your expertise rather being in mm -hmm. China and your expertise in broadcast management. David, let's start with you telling us who you are, what you are, and your expertise. Well, of course, you've already said my name. Uh, and of course, I, I understand that that hardly sounds Filipino, but I am a blue-blooded Filipino, red-blooded, blue-blooded, however you want to call it. Blue-blooded uh, is in Ateneo, is that it? Well, because I'm I'm a blue-blooded Ateneo, 16 years, that's right. But uh, I guess I'm more red-blooded uh, Filipino. And I've been a journalist uh, since I left college. So that's counting over 40 years now. But aside from that, Harry, aside from that, I've been also in corporate communications for over a decade. And right now I'm a news editor for one of China's most influential international English language state run newspapers called the Global Times. Right. Uh, David, how so, long have so basically, you been there? Basically, Harry, I have the front row seat to Chinese policy making and Chinese thinking. How long have you been there, mate? Uh, a whole decade, 10 years. 10 years. Now, what brought you to China? I mean, gee, I mean, there's so many broadcast stations right here in the Philippines. Why China? Well, this is a newspaper, an international newspaper, English language. And there was an opportunity. And I, and I felt that because of the changes in the geopolitics, I felt this is the right time for me to immerse myself in China. Uh, because I knew, I, I, I had the, the foresight to know that one day China would be the top cheese in the world. And yeah. I wanted to know how they think. And by placing myself as a news editor here, uh, I felt that I would now be able to understand how they think, how they do things, how they decide, which is very complex, by the way. It's not as easy to, uh, to read the Chinese mind but I felt it was good as a journalist to get into their minds and, and hopefully one day to use it to serve uh, the Philippines. Right. Uh, David, um, the reason I really reached out for you on this test broad broadcast is to I actually identify sure. and source out expertise for the new government of our new president. Now, Okay. We are under attack internationally when it comes to foreign media. Uh, call it fake news, bad information, or even delivered mm -hmm. by our leaders. Some leaders who are in politics who went around the world destroying the reputation, so to speak, of our country. Right. I mean, just the other day I was watching on, um, on uh, Al Jazeera. If you watch right. that one clip with that woman host, she was on the streets and she was showing on close-up cam a number of people, dissidents on the street, as if we had a riot and there was chaos on the streets, when in reality, mm. there were less than 200 of them. Now, why is it, you being the other side of the world, at least from this country, 
Why is it foreign media are out to attack our country? Every, Harry, every news organization has its angle. We know that, all right? Now, the thing about journalism is obviously we have what they call an objective set, uh, set of principles uh, and rules to follow in news gathering, all right? Because we understand that every human being, every person has his biases, okay? Now, that's the angle apparently that Al Jazeera took. Now, my thinking is this. I understand how the foreign press thinks. And to them, their style is they will bring always bring back the past because they know in their minds how they can link that to the incoming administration. Now, where, as you said, my expertise, what do I feel is my advantage? For example, if, if the government takes me in, my advantage, Harry, is, as I understand it, optics. Optics, what do I mean exactly? In this critical time, when the two largest issues which will haunt and follow and uh, this administration, wherever they go, is, as you mentioned, one, uh, the past Marcos dictatorship, all right, and all the issues incumbent of it, and of course, China Philippine relations and uh, Asian geopolitics in general, which of course will affect the world. Now, when I go back to optics, I speak of optics. One, you have to understand in a critical situation like this, the Western media, especially the, the Western people, all right, see, for example, a country like the Philippines as third world, and they will always see the Philippines as third world, right? As some sort of vassal state, all right? So being that as it may, if you put somebody whom they identify as one of those Filipinos, ordinary Filipinos, they will continue to pound you and act as if, yes, you're one of our vassal states. But in terms of optics, for example, Harry, if you put if they put someone like me to be the spokesman and to answer back at the foreign and Western press, optics, one, I sound like them. Two, I look like them. So on those two levels only, just on those two levels, you call it shallow, but it's not really shallow because now they will sit back and stop and think, Wait a minute, we've never encountered anyone like this from the Philippines before. Wait a minute, so that's going to derail whatever their narrative or plan is, and it gives us a chance to regroup and to counterattack. So I understand being a communicator all my life, the value of optics at the very least. Secondly, secondly, Harry, my advantage is I am not just all style. I believe, modesty aside, I'm substance. Why? Because, as you said, I come from the Ateneo, 16 years of my life, and a lot comes with that. And I was a debater for eight years for the Ateneo. All right? I was a debater. So I am more than just style. I am substance. You know how difficult it is to be a debater, especially during my era, during our era. And to be a debater, you must be quick on your feet, you must be able to distill information, to analyze information at the drop of a hat and speak at the drop of a hat and make sense at the drop of a hat. Everything at the drop of a hat. There is no room for error. There is no room for thinking. There is no room for small talk. Everything has to be spick and span and snappy. Okay, uh, let, let me expound on the concept of optics. Now, when we have broadcast stations in this country, about 40 years ago, it was all in English. Then, one by right. one, the news started to go Tagalog and Taglish. whatnot. Okay. They went well, Taglish. I'm not sure that Taglish was a good direction to take. I still believe. No, it's not. And I, I think it's nonsense. I really think it's nonsense. No, sorry. no, but you got to remember, you've gotta, now you've got 110 million Filipinos that go way out into the provinces. Never mind the cities, mm -hmm. never mind the big cities. And never mind those that are learned and educated in the green, blue, and red, and whatnot. The point is, mm. to further the reach of broadcast TV, as well as newspapers, Tagalog, Visayan, and whatnot, um, 
it started to come out and the rich and the people started to participate in TV interviews and whatnot. Now, I understand. I understand where you're coming from when it comes to the optics when you want to address foreign media. I think that's good. Right. That's correct. Yes. Maybe we are lacking. Better yet, we are not maybe. We are lacking in the ability to address the attacks from foreign media, which is all a lot of crap. Now, when it comes to um, reaching out to the Filipino, ang, alam mo, kaya malakas ang Channel 7 dito, ang GMA, even PTB4, naging nananagalog na sila. I think you may have to do a two-system, you know? Uh, no, a two-system I, I, I communication agree, agree, system. And, 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 my, and, my, and my plan, my plan, of course, is to go truly bilingual. In other words, English programs will be shown in English, the original soundtrack with Filipino subtitles, and Filipino programs will be broadcast in original Filipino with English subtitles. Now, this is yeah. the way this is this is what they do, Harry, among the best broadcast channels in the world. And I have studied the best broadcast channels in the world, and this is the way to go. Subtitles, not dubbing. Okay. Uh, that's terrific. I, I like the way you explained that very candidly. Uh, David, how have we failed with PCO or our communications teams in the Philippines? Where have we failed? How have they failed? And yet they make billions annually between GMA7 and previously. I think they failed because they don't have a plan. They just don't have a plan. I think, one, they don't have a plan. They don't know where to begin. Uh, they think it's just to, to, to try to be cute, to try to be populist. I've seen it all, uh, Harry. I've seen it all, okay? Uh, PCOO, or, or communication for the government, is a very, very complex and difficult task. It's very challenging. And I have studied very carefully, for example, the communicators in other countries. I have studied the communicators, obviously, in the U.S., for example, the White House press secretary, not just White House, we're talking Pentagon, we're talking the State Department, and then I study how they do it in, 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 the, in the UK. I study how they do it in Canada. I study how they do it in Australia and other countries. Even in Singapore, for example, and Malaysia, I have studied how they do it. And it's all very different from the way we do it. I don't understand it. I really don't understand why we have to be so different as if being different is good. But in this case, being different is very bad, actually. It, uh, maybe you already have the answer right there. The, the attention to the populist move, to be able to reach and communicate to the guy who lives in the barrios way down outside the cities. Maybe but but that's it's actually intention. misinformation. You see, Harry, it's misinformation. Just because you act populist, doesn't mean you're giving the right message or you're communicating the right message. There, what I'm saying is this. There is a way to be down to earth and still not insult the intelligence of people, as you said, in the barrio and the far-flung areas, all right? There you go. We, we, don't want, we, we, don't want, we don't want, Harry, we don't want to keep people in bondage, okay? That's always been my gripe. My gripe is... They act like they want to keep the majority of people in bondage. My idea, precisely because I grew up privileged, because I was gifted with all these things, is I want to lift people up. I don't want to dominate them. I want to raise their standards, you know? That's always been my thing, Harry, you know? And I understand that that's been misunderstood. But it may be misunderstood. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Just because I'm misunderstood doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just means that they want to continue dominating and keeping people in bondage, and I'm not interested in that. Right? Are, are you open to the sensitivities of managers? You know, David, when you work with a broadcast network, especially here where they make billions, okay, and they have, well, um, it's all diminishing now because of social media. Would your sure. sensitivities be open anyway to the corporate gangplank, so to speak? You know, it's not like you own I'm the station. Always, you, know, yeah. you know, Harry, I'm always open to discussion, to conversations. Yeah. 
without I, losing especially... without losing your sentiments and your passion. I will, I will not. I will not. I will not compromise my core principles. No, but I am always willing to discuss compromises on some areas as long as the end product is fulfilled, is achieved. All right. No, I, That's I, the important thing. We, we can make adjustments along the way, fine, but we still must reach that goal. Yeah, um, David. Once you let's assume you do come in, and the government sees the importance of your expertise and bringing you in, other than managing content and the journalism side of it, let's go to the business side. Um, do you? Would you have? Would you say you are competent on the business side? To administrate no, over 150 what, people, what, you, you know what it's like in a what, corporation. You know what I'm saying. What I'm saying, first of all, Harry, is public television or public broadcasting in general is supposed to be public service first and foremost. Well, that's right? what we TV Our for is, is yes, is public service. It has to be public service, whether it's public service in information, whether it's public service in news. Whether it's public service in quality entertainment programs, it has to be all in for the greater public interest. That's my belief always in public broadcasting for the greater public interest. There will be public education, everything. Uh, public television is educational, informational, and in fact, my plan is 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 to is to Train the journalists again of public broadcasting, so that the quality of their journalism is of high quality and can even surpass the quality of journalism at commercial stations. Uh, is it where do you draw the line between presentation and content? What comes first? What is more important? The content, right? I would imagine content is always yeah. more important, than, of course. Substance. Yeah, but if you get People who learn journalism and people who learn how to sit in front of the camera on TV—it's all about makeup and looking good and looking young, basically. No, yeah, we're, we're 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 going to basically, and I will show them the importance in this whole landscape of broadcasting that we are not out to compete with commercial stations. We are out to Educate. establish that we are the go-to channel. For news and information, if you want credible news, if you want credible information, if you want good programming, you want quality programming, you come to us. If the parents want to want their children, their, especially their young children, to watch quality educational programs, this is the place to come to. Period. You know, David, you need not campaign to me. I'm already voting for you. <laughs> Okay, now <laughs> let, let's let, let me expand just a little bit to to go out on the limb, so to speak. Tell us mm. what is the current situation of the country, our country, the Philippines, vis-a-vis -vis foreign media. I mean, how do we look like uh, abroad? Because I was just talking to a friend in New York on uh, the other day on Zoom, and they were telling me, "Oh, the Duterte administration has done not good. It, it's crap. It's." You know, dictatorial well, well, and everything. Well, I'm like, what I mean, the hell, I mean, Harry? I mean, I, I have to be honest, Harry. They're right. It's very pedestrian right now. How okay? bad is it? it tell it, me. It, tell us. Tell us how bad. It's bad. Do I mean, look I mean, I, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe uh, using the current vocabulary of the English language. But all I can say is the bad with a capital B. Okay. <laughs> That's all yeah. I can say. But it's fake news. It's by Maria Ressa. I mean, we all know they don't well, even well, have a Philippine corporation. The journalism side, the journal, what I'm saying, the journalism side has a lot to be desired. Even the entertainment side has even more to be desired. And in terms of in terms of uh, public education, in a uh, uh, television as an educational medium. It's virtually non-existent right now. But do you see our broadcasts in the Philippines being there in China? You're access, you, you access it, right? What Philippine channels? Yes. I mean, yes, just of to course. see to see what's going on now. How do of course, we? I, 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 you know, you know, Harry, I can watch programs from virtually all countries in the world from here. Okay, 
So that's why that's why I'm able to study the programming from different countries. Right. You know, almost simultaneously. Right. Mm. David. And I've done and, and Harry, I've done that for years, right? <laughs> that's how I know you. That's how I know of you. And I know exactly more or less your expertise in everything. It's just mm. we are now faced with a new government. With every new government, there's passion, there's excitement, there's the concept of going forward, there is improvement. Yeah, you now, know, you know, Harry, I understand I understand my ideas are considered idealistic. But you know, somebody's got to start somewhere. If nobody starts it, you never get one step forward. Somebody's got to start it. I'm not saying I'm going to create miracles. No, but I'm saying at least, at least I have the know-how and the passion and the moral commitment to do something, to start something. That's what I'm saying, okay? David, you're a Filipino citizen, yes? Absolutely. And at Natural heart, born. and at heart, you're Filipino. At heart, you know, I, I bleed when I watch program from the Philippines. You know, you know, from for, for for many years, for decades, my heart's bleeding because instead of moving forward with technology, moving forward, it's actually moving backward in terms of content, in terms of style, in in terms of professionalism. We're actually backsliding. <laughs> uh, the compounded frustration you are feeling. Are you, can you be available for our country as we move forward with our majority president and vice president? If you just give, if you just give me a grace period, because obviously I'm living in, I'm living in Beijing, you know, there, you know, obviously I will get there as soon as I can, uh, within reasonable limits and I will hit the ground running. I mean, Harry, you've known me for many years. You know my style. I hit the ground running, and when I say running, I have turbo uh, rockets on my on my back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, yes, you are available, and yes, oh, absolutely, you, you are willing to fly in and work with us to improve, if anything, the image of our country going forward. Someone has to address this foreign media. Someone has to address. Well, somebody has to trust. Somebody, you know, the, the people, the powers that be will have to trust because I work largely on intuition. I work intuition that's not unfounded. Intuition based on the wealth of knowledge I have acquired over the years and over the decades. You know, this is something which is difficult to explain. But this is the culmination, for example, of my... Uh, near half a century of, of a career in, in various communication fields and experiences and exposure uh, and a lot of reading and watching and a lot of observation. I mean, it's all coming together now that I feel that at this time of my life, it is time now to use all of this for the greater good of the country and the Filipino people. Very quickly, David, on a personal basis, what are your biases on the political side? In terms of what? Uh, political side, for example. On politics, do you have I any have certain always, biases? I, well, well I, don't have any, I don't have any political stripe. My stripe is for the greater public interest. That has always been my stripe. If you support for the greater public interest, for the greater good, that's my politics, okay? Understand that. Terrific. I just want to do a good job for the Fili Filipino people, for the country. That's my political strike, okay? David, given the opportunity, and we can bring you back to the Philippines, mm -hmm. where and what company and what broadcast network would you like to come in to be most effective, considering the years of experience and I feel that my, my, my task now, Harry, is to work for government because, you know, there is a lot of things to be done uh, in terms of policy and in terms of sending a message, especially as you mentioned earlier, to the foreign press and things like that. Somebody has to face the foreign press. If you make me work in commercial, I can't face the foreign press. But if you put me in a consequential position in government, 
especially in communications, then I can face these people from the foreign press. I can go on their programs live and I can go toe to toe with them. And I'm sure they will be wary of trying to trick me with their questions. They will be very wary once they see me opening my mouth. Yeah, that's true. You know, David, it's- They um... will be wary because I told you earlier on the start of the program, as I said, Harry, the optics, I sound and look like them. Do you actually think they would try to pull a fast one over me? No, because they will not consider me a third world person. Because once I open my mouth, they'll say, shit, this guy sounds exactly like us. Damn it, they'll say, you know? Uh, but the management of the current broadcast, the government broadcast, is another issue to tackle. You got to remember. Yes, when, yes. When it, yeah, when it comes yes. to PTV4, I mean, you've got the union. And then you've got the setup, the, 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 the basically. Well, I will always, I will always sit down, be open to sitting down. Let, let's discuss things. Let's put everything on the table and let's see where we can move forward. Because I want to convince the workers there also at PTV4. Okay, David, what I plan okay. to do, what I plan to do, and I understand they don't come from the same background as I do. Precisely, I want to explain to them that what I plan to do will in the end benefit their families and their future generations because i believe in lifting people up i am not here to hold everything to me 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 no i am here coming down from the hill and sharing what i know because i want to lift other people who are not as fortunate as i am to be better and to have greater opportunities in life well um david you're inspiring. It's really nice to talk to you. Considering this test broadcast with iTech Digital Productions, we are a small group in this country, but because of the emergence of social media, the significance as seen mm -hmm. in this last election, not to worry, right. this test broadcast will be putting, up, putting it up on the web. And for sure, the group, the groupings behind whoever designates whoever and whatever into whatever broadcast. This will reach them, especially even the president. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you know, you've, Harry, met, I mean, you've met the president right before, like I have, because of... Of course, and, and he, I, I heard he even said when my name was mentioned to, and by the way, my name has already been broached to him. He said, yes, I remember, and this is a direct quote, I remember him from before, the him meaning me. Okay. So he does. Of course he does. Well, of course he does. We all went around the same circles when we were younger, but that's I, right. I, that's right. If I remember right, you became the professional very early on in this game of journalism. I remember well, you. I, so I began when I was 20, Harry. I began when I was 20 years there old. You go. Ateneo, 20 there years you old. There you go. Yeah. Okay, uh, David, I will let you go now. I know you're busy and- uh, Oh, thank you. For, it's, been a, it's been a great uh, time talking to you, Harry, and to reach out to the Filipino people. Rest assured that we will put this on the web and other, all the different sites that we can put this on. If not, even send a, a disc or a digital um, platform straight to government. We believe, I believe thank in you. you. And, um, you inspire me with your passion your cabinet, candidness to be able to tackle all the different issues. And most especially, like I keep saying, the foreign press that's out to attack our country. Oh, You know, it's amazing. Uh, Harry, I, I know how to deal with the foreign press because I've been a journalist for many decades. I've actually trained in the U.S. Uh, so I understand how they think. All right. I, I was also a crisis PR strategist. So I understand from both ends, from the PR perspective and from a journalist perspective, I can play both ways, you know what I mean? Mm. Okay, David, thank you very much for taking time out to talk to us here. <laughs> thank uh, you, Harry. This is the test broadcast and I am, I'm, I'm glad that I have you as the very first guest considering all the interest and all the conditions that we have to face in our new government yeah, yeah la la last thing harry I, last thing i just want to say is that people it. say when they grow older they lose their idealism and they lose their passion and they want to slow down in life well guess what this person has a lot more passion than i've ever had in my entire life and now i'm at the peak of my life and i'm raring to go we will have you back in our country soon david rest assured at the yeah. rate we're going 
We need your expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank, very much. Thank you. I appreciate and, uh, that. Let's look forward to seeing you in the next month or two. All right, Daryl. You take care. Nice All seeing right. you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. You had David Nye there. He was explaining who he is, what he is, his expertise, etc. Let me tell you quickly about this test broadcast. This is brought to you by iTech Digital Productions. It's here in Makati. Um, it's a new studio. It's venturing out. And we're opening up to multiple programs, not just Talk to Harry and Superbrands Marketing. No, we're going to be having different hosts. We're going to be talking about different issues. And it'll be both digital, it'll be on-site, and it can be off-site now that we have the Zoom capabilities and whatnot. Uh, this broadcast network can now go abroad, go around everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this program. My name's Harry Tambuato. This is brought to you again one more time by iTech Digital Productions. Maraming salamat po.